In today's video, I find myself in a bad situation. Let's see how it turns out. Hello everybody, welcome to this latest episode. I am your host Robbie and this is Robbie's Talking Tees. Tarantula content for tarantula lovers just like yourselves. In today's video, I'm gonna be rehousing five arboreal tarantulas and show you what happened during those rehouses. It's a bit shocking, but hopefully you learn something from it. But before I show you that footage, smash that like button. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Now let's get into it. Hope you enjoy it. Here we go with the start of the video. As you can see, I've got one, two, three, four, five little arboreal tarantulas to rehouse. Apart from one, the Trix Palma Ocati, which is semi arboreal, but it's enjoying this arboreal setup so much that. I'm just going to replicate it again into these slightly larger enclosures, give them a bit more space. I don't like these that they're in at the minute and they're not very good for arboreal slings. There's not enough height in them so they get a bit stuffy in there. I end up having to put more ventilation holes in there just to stop them going stagnant and uh, they're just a pain in the backside. So what we are rehousing today, as I said, I'm already rehousing the Trixapelma Ocati. We are also doing Pistotheria Sophusca Lowland. Now this was out on the top when I picked up the pot. It's such a shame that it's gone inside. Hopefully I'll be able to get you some good footage of that. We're also doing Pistotheria Miranda. We're also doing... Avicularia jurensis, the Peru purple. Now this molted recently. I'm going to do a slightly different setup for that. I'm going to use clay balls instead of substrate because I found that my Avicularia slings are doing much better after using the clay ball setups in these enclosures. And last but not least, we have Samulpaeus pulcher. Now this definitely needs a bigger enclosure than this little pot that it came in. So let's get it underway, shall we? And start with Pistotheria Sophusca Lowland. So here we go, let's get this underway. Now I know this is only about a two inch diagonal leg span and hasn't got the Sophusca coloration that you see once they get older it still looks like your bog standard piece of sling but this is the setup i've got for it substrate cork bark bit of sphagnum moss hopefully it burrows in round round the back here and uses the sphagnum moss to make a little hide which piece of tend to do as slings they do like to burrow First, we've got to get it out of here. So, let's do a little bit of uh, investigating. Hopefully it doesn't come bolting up at me. There it is, on the cork bark. Let's give you guys a better look. And his pokey is being rather well behaved. There it is, Peace of Furious of Fusca Lowland. I did get this one from Mark's Tea Room. He's an awesome seller online, and if you haven't bought anything off him, 
make sure to check him out. He has got great prices and always has great stock. So let's get this little beauty in its new enclosure. Hopefully it's just gonna be a case of just place the cork bark in there, prod it down, and hopefully it just goes straight straight in okay yeah you don't want to go on my hand mate you want to go straight down mm, this way straight down it's the thing with most pokies, their first instinct is to go straight up. So trying to get them to go downwards during a, a rehousing could be quite tricky. In you go. Down you go. That's it. Just want to let go of that. There you go. That was quite straightforward and quite simple. And there it is, right where I hoped it would go, right behind the cork bark, tucked up in that sphagnum moss. Hopefully I've demonstrated there not to panic when it comes to piece of theria. I know they do have a nasty little bite with very potent venom, but that is the last thing they ever want to do. Their first reaction is to try and run away from any threat, scrunch up and try and use their natural camouflage in order to avoid larger predators or anything they feel is a threat. Then they'll obviously threat pose and biting is the last, last, last resort. So that's the key to dealing with peace Lotheria, is don't panic, don't freak out, don't scream and shout, and just make it more difficult than it needs to be. But let's move on to the next one, which is gonna be the Trixapelma Ockerty. So here we go, Trixapelma Ockerty. Now this one you can see is right on the cork bark. This one's put in some size quite quick, like you would expect from Trixapelmas. And I do happen to know that this species is not Annie's favorite. Annie from Annie's Arachnids. She doesn't have a good time with this species. She does say they are her nemesis look at that beautiful booty now the thing about these is that i find amazing is they don't fret pose like normal tarantulas what they do is they stick their butt right up into the air when they feel threatened and then they start flicking their urticating hairs they don't do the standard stand on their back legs and raise their front legs up like normal tarantulas do. It's quite amazing to watch when you see it. Not that I ever want to stress a tarantula out to the point that it feels like it wants to throw a fret pose up. But there it is. Trixapelma ockerty. Look at the colorations. I think this one's in pre-molt. Judging by how dark the little patch on the bum is getting. I think it's in pre-molt, but such a gorgeous spider. Now I did have an adult of these before, which ended up turning out to be male. Now I haven't sexed this one, so hopefully this one's a little girl as by the time I sexed the other one, it was too late, it lasted a couple of weeks and he passed away. 
which was a shame because he was such a gorgeous boy. But anyway, another easy, calm down. Okay, calm down. Did you see he thought about sticking his fangs into me there? That's my fault. He gave me a little, a little warning to say, look mate, don't mess with me or I will give you a little nip. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm not going to mess around with this little guy. I'm just going to guide him into his new enclosure. There you go mate, go on. And let you get settled in there. But again, not panicking. He didn't sink his fangs in, there's no bite. I don't think he wanted to bite me, otherwise he would have done. And that was very stupid behavior on my part. So I apologize to everyone watching this. This is not how you should be doing things with tarantulas. And I feel really bad for that, mate, I'm sorry. We'll leave you to enjoy your new enclosure. So after that, nearly taking a little bite. Now I must say that was my fault and I do apologize. I shouldn't be playing about with tarantulas like that. It's not good for you and it's not good for the spider. But hopefully we can learn from what just happened there and take something positive from it that not all tarantulas just want to sink their teeth in and cause as much damage as possible but we're going to move on we are now rehousing Avicularia jurensis the Peru purple I don't know if you watched my video that I got some new additions from Ellie we got a much bigger jurensis peru purple that has just molted it's put on some size so maybe next week i will do a rehousing video of that because i said in that video that it was in a temporary enclosure it's now molted i'll let it harden up and then i'll for next week's video i will rehouse the peru purple and let you have a look at what it looks like after the malt. But enough waffling about that, let's get this one in the new enclosure. And in this enclosure, I've got it set up, piece of cork bark, clay balls, these are much better than normal substrate for avicularia. Fake plants, just so it can web up and uh, make a nice little home in there. So let's get it out. Now this one, Molted last week, I think, a few like three, four days ago. So it should be good enough to rehouse now. There it is, sitting on its cork bark, right there. Teeny tiny little avicularia. Now I'll tell you a funny story. Annie was doing the feedings the other day. And she phoned me and said, this one's dead. It's not dead. She didn't have her glasses on and she saw the molt and assumed that it was dead. She couldn't tell the difference between the real spider and the molt. I just thought I'd tell you that. So, without further ado, let's get this little one into its new enclosure. OK. 
No, 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 no. Where did it go? Did it go in? I always have this issue with avicularias that they're so quick. They just bolted in there and I didn't see where it went. So let's check it out. See where it is. And there it is. After searching for a minute or two, found it hidden behind that leaf. So it was rehoused. Safe and sound. So it looks like it's going to be nice and comfortable in there. Hopefully it'll web up all the leaves in there and make a nice little tunnel system. And be super happy. So let's move on to the next one. Samalpais Polcher. So next up we're doing Samalpais Polcher. Is right here. Let's put on some size. It's definitely outgrown this little pot. Definitely needs a new enclosure. Now this is sort of the same setup as the Avicularia, but we have used substrate and some sphagnum moss this time. Hopefully, this will be a nice, smooth rehouse. Now these have a tendency to get very very bolty when disturbed so this is definitely one I don't really want to be messing about with so as you may know Samalpais don't have urticating hairs so they do have slightly more potent venom than your average New World Terrestrial or New World Tarantula. So because of that, we're going to be extra careful during this rehousing. Because the last thing we want is a very, very startled Tarantula with a potentially nasty bite. What I'm going to do. gently poke it towards its new cork bark and hopefully it will go down the back where the sphagnum moss is no no what it's going to do is run round under the table right let's get it so normally I wouldn't show you this process of catching the tarantula but I just want to show you guys how not to panic when rehousing because even though this tarantula is out it's not actually causing any problems it's just chilling And minding its own business and it has settled on top of the enclosure that the little piece of theory and Miranda's in that we're rehousing next so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little original bit of cork bark out place that in there and my next plan is to try and gently coax it it's not to start with so it just climbs up into its new enclosure and tries to settle in there no don't go down you are such a typical tarantula they never want to go in the direction that you want them to that's it, up you go. It's not that difficult, is it? 
Go and explore your new home. There it is. No hassle whatsoever, even though it got out. And there you go. It did exactly what I wanted it to. Go behind the court bark in where all this sphagnum moss is. And hopefully it will set up home in here. And it will feel safe and continue to thrive. So now that's done. Let's rehouse the one whose enclosure you saw it climb up onto. Peace Letheria Miranda. So let's do it, the last one. Peace Letheria Miranda is right down the bottom here in the cool bark. I can just see. So you can see its little toes there. Hopefully, this is another straightforward rehousing because Peace Letheria aren't that bad to do. So, what we're going to do. What we're going to do is hopefully pretty much the same as what we did with the Sophisca Lowland. My only concern is that Peace of Miranda are a lot, lot, lot more skittish and a lot more flighty than Sophisca's are. Out of all the Peace of I've kept, this is the species that normally gives me the biggest run around. See it's in its cork bark tube there, not giving me any problems at the minute. What we're going to do is remove this old enclosure out of the way bring the new enclosure in just going to place the tube above its new home and hopefully if I poke it down it will just go straight into the new home without any issues I can just pull this out because it's in there and there it was pretty straightforward it went straight in behind the back of the cork bark behind here and then slowly moved round and has settled here and this is what Peace Letheria do they like to hunker down as you can see it's trying to use its natural camouflage to blend in with the cork bark behind it hoping that any predator that was after it won't see it that wasn't as bolty as I thought it was going to be that was pretty straightforward it was very well behaved I'm happy with that so that's the last one rehoused so let's finish this video up here And there you have it, all five tarantulas rehoused. Now I can't stress enough to all keepers in the hobby, you shouldn't mess around with tarantulas because as you saw in that footage, it's so easy that you can almost that you can get tagged, bitten, and end up in a whole heap of trouble. I was very lucky that that tarantula was only testing the surface and didn't clamp its fangs down into my finger otherwise I would have been in a bit of bother so if you're watching this learn from my mistake get the tarantula from point A to point B safely for you and as safely for the tarantula as possible don't play with it don't mess with it don't stress it out and your rehousing will go amazingly I was lucky I shouldn't have been falling around the way I was just to put it on camera and I apologise again for that. I did say in the video I'm sorry for setting such a bad example. But hopefully it showed you that in a situation like that, don't panic. The worst thing you can do is panic because it could end up a 
whole lot worse. So now all that's over, I'm going to end the video here. But before we go, I want to take the time to remind you about the 2000 subscriber giveaway we're doing on the channel. At that 2k mark, I'll be giving one of you the chance to win a T Senadonia. All you have to do to be entered is go over to my Grammar Stone and Rosea video and just write T Senadonia in the comments. Hopefully that's something you're all running to do now as you're interested in winning that amazing species. So now I've said that, I'll see you in the next video. Have a great week. Bye.